So um, we start with this. If a lab in China has proven to be a factory for viral contagions um, you know, in the world, then the internet, social media in particular, and especially TikTok, is a factory for a different kind of contagion, social contagion destructive and degrading and, uh, uh, you know, behaviors and lifestyle choices, concepts, ideas can go from fringe to trendy to mainstream quite literally overnight, right? What was unusual one minute might be ubiquitous the next. And people, especially young people, can get caught in the current and drown before they even notice that their shoes are wet. Here is perhaps the latest example and maybe the strangest. Also a very instructive example. Over on TikTok, there is apparently an intense interest in multiple personality disorder or DID, dissociative identity disorder is what they call it now. Um, Hashtags related to this topic have millions of entries. I mean, hundreds of millions of entries. That's how how much interest is. That's how popular it is. And many of them are from users claiming to have DID themselves. The trend has grown large enough that even Good Morning America has, has noticed And uh, they did a report on it a couple of days ago. Watch this. Now to the rise in teens on TikTok who are self-diagnosing themselves with rare mental health disorders that they probably don't have after watching videos on the social platform. It's a story we first saw in the Wall Street Journal. And Ariel Reshef joins us with more on this. Ariel, good morning. Good morning to you, Mary. Yeah, those videos have been viewed hundreds of millions of times. And while experts say this may be elevating a conversation about mental health, self-diagnosis can be a dangerous, slippery slope. DID typically occurs between the ages of six and nine. This morning, experts warning about what they call a troubling trend on TikTok that could leave some teens believing they have a serious mental disorder. Hello, 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 hello. Posts with the hashtag disassociative identity disorder and borderline personality disorder viewed hundreds of millions of times. Some of those videos listing possible signs to look out for and encouraging viewers to self-evaluate. Right. So now in these videos, and again, there, there are many of them, the alleged multiple personality sufferer will, will usually re- refer to themselves as the system. That's how these people refer to them. They are the system. And the system is the word they use to describe the whole collective of personalities that they have in their heads. And then each individual personality is called an alter. And they will then usually introduce each alter in their videos, each personality, and sometimes put on a different voice for each one. But that that requires a certain amount of talent that most of these people don't have. Um, And so most of the videos are kind of like this one. Watch. Hi, my name's Becca. I'm the host of The System. Hi, I'm Bella. I don't really know what role I have in the system because I am a new alter. So. <laughs> Hello, my name is Rosa. I am the caretaker of the system. What's up? It's Jamie. I'm the primary protector of the system. We took our meds a while ago, so I'm groggy. Hi, my name's Vega. I am the sexual protector of the system. Hey, I'm Kai. I am a trauma holder and gatekeeper for the system. I work very closely with another alter, Nick, who is an internal uh, caretaker. He does not really front. So you see, that's how multiple personality disorder works, apparently. Um, all of the personalities are aware of each other and, and they work together. You know, they, they hold meetings and conferences they send memos back and forth and emails and everything. This is what happens, I guess, when you have 14 personalities and they're all boring as hell. Though some members of the alleged DID community on TikTok, they do try to keep things a little bit more interesting. So here's a guy whose personalities are um, are more antagonistic towards one another, which makes it more interesting. Watch. Hey everyone, it's Asher. The best alter. This is Dan Life of somebody that has dissociative identity disorder. Let's go. Hi everyone, it's Annie, and I'm gonna be in charge of cleaning today. That means I'm going to be out, I'm going to be listening to my music, and I get a nice couple hours just to myself. This is really nice because I tried to get some time out yesterday and I couldn't. And since I'm going to be out for a little bit, I changed into my clothes. This is my necklace, and this is a shirt somebody sent me. Everybody, it's Alex. Annie got jalapeno in her eye and then switched out immediately, so I had to switch in and now I'm having to deal with the pain. So thank you, Annie. Hi, everybody. It's April. This is a before shot, and this is an after shot. This is why I'm in control of what the body looks like, because the boys would make it look homeless. 
Now, the impression of DID that you get from videos uh, like this is that a person with this disorder has a, sort of a cohort of little gnomes or gremlins living in his skull, driving him around, fighting for control of the steering wheel. And, uh, and that's, that's, most of the videos are like this. And, and they've been extremely effective in convincing other people on the site, mostly kids, that they too can have multiple personalities. The problem, of course, well, there are a lot of problems. Uh, one of them is that is that this is how split personalities work in movies and TV shows, not in real life. There was a best-selling book called Sybil back in the 70s. I think they made a movie uh, about the book as well. And that, that's, that's the one that first popularized this concept of multiple personality disorder. Before that, um, it, it existed as a clinical concept, but it wasn't, it, it wasn't in the mainstream the way that it is now. And in that book, the patient Sybil, real name Shirley Mason, has a condition that works kind of like what you see in the TikTok videos, kind of like what you see in the movies. In what was the M. Night Shyamalan movie, Split, where the guy has 15 different personalities and some of them are serial killers and some of them aren't. Um, and so Shirley Mason, Sybil, had something sort of like that. Problem though is that the book was based on a lie. The whole thing was a hoax. It was a fraud. Even so, it's cemented into the minds of the American public and, and people that, um, this idea and people have been convincing themselves that they suffer from this fake version of the illness ever since. Now, of course, I say fake version of the illness as if there's a real version. I don't think there is. Now, this is very much a live debate in the psychiatric field right now. Um, some so-called mental health experts will argue that DID exists, but it's very different from the cinematic portrayals. And others will say that the whole thing is a category error, that it doesn't exist at all. It's an invention of the psychiatric field itself. Now, according to this argument, which I find extremely persuasive, there's only a very, very, very small number of patients who would even potentially qualify for this diagnosis. And then among that small group, a certain portion of them are simply faking it. And that's the problem with, with this mental, with a lot of mental illnesses, in fact, is that, is that um, despite what, you, what you're often told or what you, what you might think with a lot of these illnesses, uh, they have not located the illness in the physical brain itself. Because if they had, they wouldn't call it a mental illness. They would call it a brain disease or a, neurolo a neurological condition. But those are distinct categories. So if they're calling a mental illness, it means that they have not, um, with any, with any, uh, they have certainly not conclusively located the illness within the brain. And if you haven't located the illness physically, then it's really just theoretical whether it physically exists or not. Um, and so that's, that's, that's another idea about multiple personality disorder, that it doesn't exist, that it's only a very, a very small group of people who potentially would even qualify for it. Many of them are faking it. And then there's also another portion that have been convinced, they're not faking it intentionally. They've just been convinced through cultural and therapeutic influences that they have the disorder when they really don't. So it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Now, at any rate, it certainly can be said that um, those who believe in the existence of legitimate multiple personality disorder have never come close to actually proving that it exists. All they could do is produce examples of people who claim to have it, which is far from the sort of proof that they would really need. Is it even possible for a single mind to contain multiple distinct personalities, distinct minds within itself, which are separate from each other and not aware of, of what the other is thinking? How does that even work? Is it possible for a mind to be compartmentalized in that way? Um, it's an extraordinary concept, which requires extraordinary evidence to prove, and none of that evidence has been provided. But that's all somewhat academic, right? Whether split personalities exist or not, we can hopefully all agree that, that uh, 10 million people on TikTok didn't all suddenly start suffering from the illness all at the same time. This trend is without a doubt a result of both self-delusion and deliberate fraud, and often kind of a mix of the two. Maybe it begins as a deliberate fraud, and then people actually succeed in convincing themselves that they really have it. Um, I, I used to be very good at this kind of thing when I was a kid, when I would pretend that I was sick so I didn't have to go to school, and then by late, at, late morning, I'd actually start feeling sick because I was so good at acting the part. And I think something like that happens sometimes with these mental illnesses. Now, the more interesting and important question is why exactly 
so many people would want to convince the world and themselves that they suffer from what would be a debilitating mental illness. Now, I think there are a few answers to that. One is the most obvious point, that the mentally ill are a victim class. Victimhood is, is power in our culture, as we know. The more victim labels you can claim, the more power, the more social credit you accrue. Also, too, many people lack anything approaching a real identity or a real personality, mostly because they've been staring at screens every waking moment of their lives and letting the internet do all of their thinking for them. And um, they have almost no internal dialogue. They have, they have no, almost no internal life at all. Um, and because of this, you know, they tend to adopt a quantity over quality approach to personality. Usually this will come in the form of adopting different pronouns, different sex and gender identities. But this latest thing is even better because it allows them to literally take on more than one personality. All of the personalities are dull and uninteresting, but they, but what they lack in substance, they make up for in sheer numbers, I guess. Three related to this. Mental illness in general is especially trendy in its own right, largely for the reasons covered by the first two points. And four, this all stems from our fundamentally disjointed and essentially superstitious view of the self. So we see the self, ourselves, the self generally, not as a continuous, holistic, coherent thing, but as an arbitrary amalgamation of our desires and our hopes and our preferences in any given moment. We're constantly in the process of uncreating and recreating ourselves. Our self of five minutes ago doesn't necessarily bear any relation to our self of right now. And our self of right now may be entirely different from the self that takes the field tomorrow. We see ourselves in this culture today as these kinds of... um, shape-shifting changelings, lacking any concrete overriding identity. And according to this view of things, really we all have dissociative identity disorder because it's easy to dissociate from an identity when you don't really have one at all to begin with.